Well, such a close contest as we enter round three, and time for Detective Sam Smith to open her casebook again. For this is the observation test where we challenge the contestants, and you, to spot five deliberate continuity errors which can be verbal or visual in our specially made film. Right, contestants, will you now turn to your screens, please, and concentrate hard as an important client brings a bizarre case for Sam Smith. I've got to go out now. It's nearly lunchtime. Shouldn't you be going home? I've switched it off. Yeah, I've got to see a client at West European Finance. You got a plan? Yes, thanks. Well, let me. Shouldn't you be going home for your supper? Oh, go on, I'll just smack her. No, it's no game in here, kid. What would you have done if the microchip hadn't been invented? Dad, I'm bored. The thing is, it's been causing me a lot of problems lately. I mean, what with the reorganisation? My heart bleeds for him. Always the woman behaving irrationally. Typical male response. Look, Mr Potter, there's very little I can do about office jealousy. But someone is turning her against me. Celia? Cybernetic link integrated accountant. A computer? Does the work of a whole department. And you're having uh, personal difficulties with her? Uh, it? Oh, it is a computer. But the thing is, Celia closes down for no apparent reason. Isn't it just a technical fault? No, we've had her checked. Look, it's obviously a vendetta against professional jealous. Any suspects? Well, Celia and I have totally rationalised the company's systems. Work 24 hours a day, seven days a week to do it. Bound to ruffle a few feathers here at North European Finance. Must just appraise Mary of my gastronomic requirements. Mary's another computer. Of course not. She's my wife. We have a modem at home. It means we can communicate. Mary the dip. Two lightly poached eggs. Um, three tomatoes. Fancy you watching me to solve a mystery. I must be mad. I spent a week watching the thing and come up with nothing. You want me to hack in? It's illegal, you know. Kids I can't play games on it. Just find out what's wrong. It's not easy. It only accepts commands from two people. Two? Potter. That's Mr. Potter. And M? M instructs the computer to shut down. This is not a penny arcade. Only I operate Celia. Nobody else, not even the MD. What about M? Oh, yes, well, nearly. Confirming our domestic messages. Man, that'd be great, that. Never having to talk to people. Of course we talk. Sometimes. Mary says I should have married Celia. I think Mary has decided it's time the other woman got the message. Mary wouldn't sabotage my work. She knows how important it is. More important than her? Of course. I think you better tell her. I think it's too late. Another mystery solved. Now turn to the front, please, contestants, and start listing those continuity errors. And while they rack their brains for the next few moments, let me say a big thank you to the cast, especially Gwyneth Strong as our successful detective. Now to those five continuity errors. If you were trying to spot them at home, here's your chance to find out how many you got right. The first error concerned the time of day. Sam told Wallace... It's nearly lunchtime. But then reminded him... Shouldn't you be going home for your supper? Next, a costume change. Potter's plain dark red handkerchief became one with white spots. And Potter's company name also changed. West European Finance. Became... North European Finance. Change number four. The stack of tapes vanished from the top of the computer behind Potter. And the final change was to Wallace's glasses. Silver rimmed at first, dark blue rimmed later on. Well, fairly tough, I'd say, and I think the contestants agree with me. These are their answer cards, and this is how they scored. Thomas, you spotted two changes, and Fiona, so did you. So, joint third, four points each. Suzanne, you got three right, and Chris, it was three for you as well. So, you're joint winners of the round, ten points each, and let's immediately transfer those points into the scoreboard, where Suzanne has now moved up into second place, 
But still the leader with a Krypton factor now of 24, the bank official, Chris Balfour. <laughs> Round four and the contestants are on the starting line ready for the most searching test of physical ability. A race over the 20 obstacle assault course demanding agility, technique and stamina. Lieutenant Colonel Terry McCary of the Army Physical Training Corps sends Fiona Ray nearest to us and Suzanne Miles on their way. Fiona, a very keen hockey player, represents Norfolk and also plays for Halston Magpies. So she's very fit. And Suzanne captained her college badminton team at Oxford University. So they've set off at a reasonable pace. Now the two men, Thomas Marshall in red nearest to us and on the far side in blue, Chris Balfour. The bank official from Newcastle, thinking about how to pace it in the early stages here, and Thomas almost came to grief there on the balance, but uh, just managed to save himself. Fiona established an early lead down the fireman's pole, and just look at the face there of Thomas Marshall, 100% effort as he pulls himself through that tunnel, then reverses to come back on himself. Very little gap, he's uh, nearly 14 stone, that's pretty difficult to get through that. But Fiona Ray maintaining a good pace, Suzanne Miles in second place. And Fiona negotiates that very spectacular S bend. She's doing well at the moment, a physical education teacher, so we know she is very fit indeed. Suzanne Miles, who lives in Berry, which is only a few miles away from this assault course. Now, uh, can Fiona keep the pace going as she climbs that scramble net? The two men closing all the time, Thomas and Chris together. Suzanne struggling a bit on the chain bridge, and she'll know that right behind them come the two men. In fact, you'll be able to see the difference now. Fiona at the top of the scramble net, followed by Suzanne. Thomas just arrives at it, and for Fiona, it's uh, going to be a fairly worrying moment as she looks back through the net to see, in particular, Thomas and Chris Balfour climbing up, narrowing the gap on her all the time. So she's going to have a work cut out at the finish here. Has she got anything left at all? And almost a collision at the top there between Chris and Suzanne. And it's Chris who just manages that a little bit better. And now this will be difficult for Fiona. She's only five foot one, whereas Thomas is six foot one. And he's got the stride to get over those stepping stones onto the pivot bridge, down into the water. So he's in the lead now and driving himself forward, going up towards the Burma rope bridge. And the army shouting to Fiona, stay with him, stay with him because anything can happen in the latter stages if she can stay there. Chris Balfour in third place, trying hard to stay there, maybe to move up into second. He's got a chance of doing that. But the clear leader, Thomas Marshall, was in the Royal Navy and represented his ship at cross country, so we know he's fit and really hits the water hard there. And he's soaked to the skin as Fiona Ray begins her descent. And she'll want to pull her knees up now. She does plant her feet into the water. And that's a beautiful landing, hardly splashed at all. Chris just behind her, and that's not a good landing. He pitched forward. But Thomas has judged this finish to perfection. He has plenty of strength there as he goes for the line and dives across it in delight to get the 10 points. And Fiona, who ran beautifully throughout and just faded towards the end, comes home to take second place and six points. But a good run and a good race between the two of them. And Chris Balfour, well clear of Suzanne Miles, so he will take third place, and that will be four points to him. And now, let's go to the scoreboard, and after that great run, Thomas Marshall has moved up to second place, just two points behind the leader, who, with a Krypton factor of 28, is still Newcastle's Chris Balfour. <laughs> Well, such a close contest, and any one of them could still win it. Well, tonight, the contestants in the intelligence test are faced with a brain-challenging three-dimensional logic puzzle. In front of each of them is an array of pyramids and tetrahedrons, or four- and five-sided shapes. Their task is to piece them all together to form one giant tetrahedron, the outside of which will be in one color only. Are you all ready, contestants? The test starts now. First of all, for those like me who are not mathematicians, a tetrahedron has four faces and a pyramid five faces. Now the next thing to point out is that all the exterior faces, the sides that we can see, will always be in the contestant's own color. So for Suzanne there, the yellow sides will face out. And for Fiona, it will be the green side. And quite sensibly, the contestants are sorting out the pieces first, separating pyramids from tetrahedra and turning the appropriately colored faces outwards, red in Thomas's case. Then 
like Suzanne here, they must start to build the base, and the key to that is that the corners are formed by tetrahedra. The pyramids having square bases can't go there. Thomas Marshall, second going into the round, and Suzanne, who's lying fourth in the contest, doing well. Now note how the pyramids slot into the gaps between the three tetrahedra on each side of the base. And of course, once the base is completed, you follow the same rules to build the second layer. Fiona Ray is now attempting to do that, as is Suzanne Miles. And looking down the line, I think we're in for a very tight finish. Chris Balfour, uh, the tension really showing is he can't slot that pyramid. But is Suzanne virtually there? No, there's a green face showing on the left. It has to be yellow. And she spotted it, probably wondered why the audience wasn't applauding. And now she's finished, spins it round, and ten priceless points to Suzanne. And, oh, just a second or two behind her, it's going to be Chris Balfour. On goes the top, second place, six points. Now, who's going to be third? Both of them were looking puzzled. Fiona really stuck, just can't figure the last bit out. Thomas has. On goes...